All right, so I just put him. Wow. <laughs> Rocco, what is happening? <laughs> is the world blowing up? Is there... Rocco, silence your phone and turn off your fan, please. Rocco, we have System 76 on this show. I never. Today. <laughs> that is super cool. I think it's going to be an excellent episode. It's going to be. Time to get serious, Rocco. We're a professional Damn. show. <laughs> I don't think so, but we're, we're going to do our best. Rocco, we have System 76 here. Hello. 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 <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right, you ready? Yeah. Welcome to another episode of Destination Linux Podcast. Welcome to episode 54. I'm Rocco. And I'm Ryan. And this is Destination Linux. Today, Ryan, we have another awesome guest. Dude, I'm giddy. I can't even stop smiling. <laughs> we do have an awesome guest. We have Sri from System76. Welcome, Sri. Hello. Pleased to be here. So you have, you know, alongside of being with System76, you have all of the social media accounts. And before we get into System76, I'd like to talk about your background in Linux itself. So okay. you are a community manager for System76 now since September, and you worked for Intel. Take us back to that time. You joined the GNOME project when it first began. So was that your first introduction to Linux? Uh, I've, I've used Linux before that. Um, I've actually been involved or I've known Unix or Linux-like operating systems since 1988 or so. So nice. I'm very familiar with how Linux or Unix or everything works. I'm, I'm sure I'm dating myself uh, <laughs> by saying I did that. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I started well, that. I think the GNOME project just had a birthday. <laughs> This last year 20 years <laughs> so yeah you're dating yourself <laughs> i'm sorry go ahead yeah. but uh yeah uh i actually started with free bsd and uh and then at some point i was using gnome on free bsd and then i switched to linux because linux was just a better uh operating system for desktops i mean it's just better hardware support and everything else so so i just sort of naturally went from bsd to to linux and and linux is uh something a part I've of been your involved long for a long while <laughs> you, you've seen the changes i mean from 1988 to now you've got to look back and go wow i mean i'm jealous of that but you got to look back and go man how far we've come uh, we actually Oh yeah, absolutely. We, you know, how the Linux desktop has evolved is is really fascinating. For at least from like from the GNOME project perspective, we s basically started with raw Unix Linux type stuff, right? right. Uh, and so we had to, uh, like, for instance, mounting a CD required us mount, going to a terminal and saying slash dev CD ROM <laughs> and, and and you know ISO mount ISO ISO nine six six zero right and and now you know you just put the thing in and and it works so the, like if you look at at least from the GNOM project right there's like three different eras the first era was the sort of draining of the swamp sort of thing like probably anything you did before and and then the second one we're, we're you're actually creating a purpose uh mm -hmm. of of creating a user experience and and finally the third is we use we use like windows we use existing systems to find out how how we did user interfaces and now the third phase is we're doing our own thing right, right. That, and and we're creating our own specialized user experience that doesn't derive that derives from multiple sources, not necessarily you know just one. So right. uh, and our own and our own the uh, GNOME special sauce. So <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely, so, man. When you guys so, talk about Linux back in the day, it reminds me I like I get a visual of a rock and a chisel. Like, you, you got to go over here but, and mount your CD uh, manually. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, it, yes, it was definitely challenging times. <laughs> and if you look at the old screenshots, you're like, oh, man, what, what, what am that? I seeing? What right. is that? And 
why is it here? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, Kill it with fire. I don't even go back that far. And but even back then, like when I started, you didn't you didn't really know any different because that's what it was. Yeah. Now right. you look back and you say, oh, well, that was ridiculous. But at the time, it was awesome. You know. Right. Right. Right, so, sure. right, absolutely. It, 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 it. There were fun times because we were feeling our way through everything and making mistakes all the time, having to back up. Oh, that didn't work. And, <laughs> and in, uh, yeah, there's, there's all sorts of little things that we were just like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. And, and you go there, you backtrack, and then you re-engineer, and then you, you know, it's, it's sort of taking several steps back and then one step forward you know sounds like a uh, destination linux podcast <laughs> <laughs> three steps back one step forward <laughs> yeah pretty much all right so you've been working with gnome for a long time how do you get mm -hmm. involved with system 76 so uh i i was at intel for well, about 20 years or so and uh unfortunately due to business conditions uh, i was let go and uh at the time i was working for the open source technology center otc and i got to actually rub shoulders with all these amazing kernel developers <laughs> uh the 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 guy what the guy who started xorg worked was one was worked one row behind me. Wow! You know, oh, wow. <laughs> you, cool. know you know. So I, I had this background of of uh, open source and free software, uh, GNOME, and uh, during my time in, at OTC, I actually went from a shift. I started off as a a, a Unix uh, systems administrator. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started from a very technical point of view, a DevOps, and then I went on a journey after five years and ended up becoming a uh, uh, a marketing person in marketing. <laughs> uh, and maybe that's going to that's the dark crazy side. Job. I don't know. Yeah. It is, it is a crazy job. Uh, and I must have done every kind of job So uh, in that five-year period. So I applied for the job for community manager. I've never done community management as, as a specific job cool. role if you look at my resume it doesn't say community manager but i had the, the underlying structure to be the personality that the you know community management in free and, and open source software requires that you need to be somewhat a real to developers right it, right a developer won't respect you if they don't think you can speak their language so to speak so System 76 really loved my energy. They really loved the way I presented myself. And so they, they took a chance and, and hired here me. You are. And here I am. And uh, there are some things uh, I am learning on the job, uh, you know, being on podcasts and, uh, and various <laughs> other things that <laughs> I don't, I haven't normally done. But, right. uh, you know, I've done a lot of talk, public speaking. I've done a lot. I've done keynotes. I've done all bunch of other things. But uh so it's a it's a it's a learning it's experience a, it's a learning experience yes yeah, that's with any job man yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely so look everybody knows the name system 76 we don't really have to do an introduction of what that is um but let's talk about the beginnings of system 76 i know you've started but you've done your your homework and looked at you know how did this company get started what are some things that uh you guys uh, did to get the company off or, or that was done to get the company off and running at the beginning? Um, so, you know, we're on our 13th year uh, of existence uh, and Carl and Eric uh, started this company in uh, Carl's basement. You know, and wow. so you wow. know, you're you're kind of all the sort great of, companies so, start in the basement, yeah, right? Don't they? It's like every time you hear of a great company, it's like, oh, two guys. I so basement. need a two basement, guys, dude. It always starts with two. You know, it, it sounds like a very similar story to another another company. Two right. guys started in their basement, and and you know, over time, it evolved itself, and you know, through their efforts and various other people who joined them, you know, we we built uh, to build system 76 into what it is today so in that time period you know they've they've evolved uh with you know doing uh selling laptops and desktops for specifically for uh linux as that niche right, right. niche market and uh, you know the benefits of course is the fact that maybe you're like me I, I've always built my own 
uh, desktops. Uh, yeah. And it's always a, a pain to have to go through each each component you buy and then have to check is this guy does this have linux support and then check forums and things like that but here uh you, you we've developed a company that you don't have to do that anymore uh, and and you have customer support you can call somebody up and say i got this problem and and so it's these kind of successes and doing it well is what you know what made system 76 where it is today right uh, so it kind of started as you know a simple concept let's take linux and let's put it on hardware we know it's going to work and we're going to sell these out of our basement and the company starts <laughs> growing because people are like hey i'm sick of building my own machine or a lot of us build our own desktops so building right. your own laptops a lot more sophisticated or and a little more difficult to get the parts for uh, and they've kind of built the company out of that. And obviously it's grown. It's been successful. A lot of people have seen that. Do you know where right. that came from? System 76? Uh, it was a reference to the American Revolution. So, you know, the spirit of 1776. And it sort of brings the spirit of open source as a kind of as a revolutionary concept. Uh, and so that's where System 76 comes from. Right. So nice. Carl, the CEO, all of us are very passionate about open source and free software. And uh, all of us have side projects we do <laughs> that, you know, that are part of the community, things like that. So, you know, uh, you mean geeks uh, like us have side projects now? Uh, <laughs> oh, we never have side projects. Absolutely. Gigs. We got a lot of projects. <laughs> well, speaking of names, all of your laptops have a suspicious naming scheme to them so you know you got gazelle <laughs> you got you got gazelle lemur they all correlate with something so what's the backstory on the naming conventions and how that got started so it's sort of a an ode to ubuntu uh you know ubuntu is a south african term that means together right i mean most people know this so it was all like well it's a you know it's sort of a, a note to them by naming our computers after african wildlife nice. uh, so so based on that whole ubuntu name right so and it works out because the names are pretty cool right gazelle lemur kudu all of that stuff <laughs> yeah yeah i own, I own the gazelle personally Riker, or Riker, <laughs> Rocco. that's me did you forget my name already? <laughs> Apparently I did. <laughs> Why are you here? Who am I and what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what are some of the quality control measures you guys put into place? Like, for example, like drop tests, spill tests, uh, leaks uh, for water damage and stuff like that. Is there anything that you guys specifically put into place to test the laptops and the desktop? So there, there's two places, right? One is when, when we have new machines or current machines, we have we actually had we just recently hired a QA person to meticulously go through all the machines and make sure, you know, again, this is making sure the components work, everything works together as a unified experience. Uh, that's one part. And then even on the manufacturing, somebody, there is a human, I mean, we have, we have tests as, as you, as you say, but we also have a human person who checks each one before it gets shipped out to a person. So when, when you're buying a system 76 laptop, it, it's, you know, they're all of them are, QA meticulously uh, and run with tests, installs, drivers, make sure every component is working and, and so forth. We want to we want to have the highest quality product that we can deliver to our customers. Awesome. And the warranty you get on your systems? So you can start with a one year warranty and you can go up to three. Okay. Uh, initially. Yeah. So let's say I grab one of your machines. Is there a level of support that I can expect? I grab one. Uh, maybe I want a distro hop because that's kind of popular in Linux and I messed something up. Can I call you guys and be like, hey, I really messed this up. <laughs> not that he would yeah, ever do that or that no, would happen. Me, but... I, I, absolutely. <laughs> you know, you could you could call up any number of our support personnel and uh, they only support Ubuntu and Pop! OS, but I'm mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure they can get you back on one of their two supported operating systems. At least get and, you uh, back to the starting point. Yes, <laughs> like back to the back to a good state, right? So yeah, we we get all kinds of interesting questions that customers sort of manage to get themselves into, and 
maybe help them get them out of it. <laughs> then you guys mute the phone, laugh, and then go back. I don't know about that. But... <laughs> <laughs> I've worked at tech support long enough to know uh, some of those things, but look, uh, when you, when you buy a system 76 computer, there's obviously yeah. some, you know, even when I purchased one, when I was getting into Linux, there was some, it was very cool to own a system 76 in, in the laptop world, but there are some people who say, well, why not just buy a Dell or HP? What, right. what, what do you say to people like that? Well, you know, if you love Linux, uh, it makes sense to buy it from from us versus an HP or Lenovo or something else because again, you know, all of us are Linux fans. So, uh, so one part of that question I would say is you're buying it from a company who are all Linux fans themselves. We also contribute to the open source world. So HP, Lenovo, all those guys, they're not they're not really as much involved as we are because for us, the Linux desktop is. Our primary thing. Right. That's everything for us. Whereas them, it's a, it's a side thing, right? It, maybe it's a something you a check mark on a web page. Yeah, let me put Ubuntu on it. Uh, but it's not. That's our story is much more intimate when it comes to uh, Linux and the desktop and our machines. You know, we're we're betting everything on on our experience uh, as a Linux desktop. So there is definitely. Uh, if you call, if you call our support, you're not gonna be put on hold, or or you don't have to hit one. You're gonna go directly to a person who wants to talk to you, who knows and understands Linux, who is a fan of Linux. Uh, who can so, geek out with you? Who <laughs> geek out, geek out with you? Absolutely. You know, so those those are those are definitely I think perks, and and you know, it, investing in us, we're also using our own, uh, I guess our own popularity to fix things that are at the hardware level mm -hmm. uh, like uh, nvidia we have a good relationship with nvidia we we've been able to solve certain bugs so you know that investment comes in because we can use our cloud to fix fix things in the ecosystem that's really cool i didn't think about that so community feedback is important and in the linux community it's there there's no shortage of feedback Okay. So, <laughs> so as a as a as a person who's works on GNOME, I can completely uh, know that. So, how has that shaped your system offerings that you that you offer or your designs? I mean, are you are you changing things for the community, or are you just going going with what you think is best? No, uh, community input is very important for us, and we want to hear that. We want to hear that feedback. Uh, and we do do a lot of things that, uh, for instance, uh, things like uh, high DPI, those are interesting uh, features we've added from community feedback. We have done things like the Pop! OS is a, is a, is a great vehicle great. exactly for that, for community feedback. Uh, hearing from that, we're able to create a, a user experience that is, you know, for our market, for our customers. So those are the kind of things that when I think of community feedback, uh, the other one was another good one example is the IME firmware, right? We, oh, yeah. we got a lot of feedback on that. And, you know, we're, we reach out and listen to that feedback and find a way to disable the, uh, the uh, IME. Uh, Let's talk about engine. that for a second, because I thought this was really unique. You know, Intel... ME firmware is considered by many to be a potential security threat. You worked for Intel, so you know you you've had some experience with that type of stuff. And System76 made the decision very quickly, it looked like, to disable that feature. Tell us about that. So, you know, as a rule, we care very deeply about security and privacy. In fact, we were we were just on a security privacy podcast uh, where our our lead engineer Jeremy was talking a lot about, you know, the kind of the technical details. Uh, from a general point of view, right? Security and privacy is such an important concept today in our world, and right. and you know, we very strongly believe in in protecting those protecting those things. So, making that decision was easy uh, to to. It was just uh, the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do, and you know, this is again something why proprietary uh, software is such a danger because you know 
we can find these exploits and they're all behind a black box and everything else, you know, so instead of maybe fixing it, we, we, we are we're disabling it. Right. So uh, it was possible to do it and we did it. So now, and- there is rumors that Intel saying, hey, we may stop manufacturers from being able to disable this. How do you think? I know it, it's kind of like a future thing, but how do you think System 76 will respond to that? I, you know, I think it's one of those things where if that happens, we'll deal with it at that time. And right. uh, there's no specific plans that we had. If, if, you know, in, in a recent blog post by Carl, you know, he, he kind of, you know, reached out to Intel and said, like, you know, this is something we should be have the ability to do uh and you know so w- what they do from here and forward i you know is anybody's guests and but they've I think already it's, started the communication based on that blog post which is kind of cool right you know, already kind of started that back we, i mean there is definitely that danger but you know all we could do is i think is, is really be in a reactive position uh to see where it goes otherwise it's we're going to proceed on this track so, right uh, until something changes perfect all right let's get into some of the lineup here <laughs> this is where everybody needs to make sure they're ready to uh, dry up any drool as we're going through these specs. <laughs> so the galago pro is a popular choice it's a beautiful laptop we can go through the specs of it but who is this marketed towards before we go into it I think it's marketed for people like me. Uh, I me, love, me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, I love uh, the Galago Pro. You know, you know, it's like, have you ever had that envy where you look at a Mac OS machine and it's got this really nice aluminum frame and this and that? Right. And, yep. uh, you know, Galago is sort of like that, right? It sort of has that kind of Apple, apple type thing. It's a really nice looking machine. It can, he could put 32 gigs of memory on this thing. <laughs> oh, man. That's a ridiculous. I7. So, you know, and when we were, we're different from Mac OS is that we could, we could put this real into, power so in there. We could put real power into this thing and, and it, it can do anything, right? So, and you could geek out. You know, it's got a Ethernet, it's got an Ethernet port, it's got a USB C, it's got all these other things that are for the, for the technical people, for the real users, where you're not having wow. a dog hanging off the side of your laptop, right? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> what I love about it is the sheer power that you could pack into these machines. You guys oh, have a absolutely. nice starting price lineup, but when we look at the Galago Pro, Rocco was mentioning, you know, uh, you've got eighth generation Intel processors here. You can stuff in here. You've got a 13.3 right. inch, 3200 by 1800 high DPI screen. Wow, All right. 3K screen, yeah. I mean, you you mentioned the 32 gigabytes of RAM at DDR4 at 2400 megahertz that you could throw in there if you want. And here's what I really love. You got M2s and everything. I mean, the M2 NVMe, that is just such a speed boost. If you have not tried the difference between a standard SSD and the M2, it's a world of difference. And you guys are packing them in there. I mean, this is one heck of a machine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I know. Like I said, I, I love it. I use it every day. It's my it's my workhorse. Oh, you got yeah. one. Of course you do. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> yeah, makes a lot. Makes us feel good. <laughs> so you're never supposed to pick a favorite child. And maybe it's the Galago Pro for you. But tell us, what's your favorite system in the System 76 lineup? Yes, it is the Galago Pro. <laughs> but... There's a what's one you secretly I, want to bring home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like the I like the ORX Pro. But you can put a lot of other stuff in there. It's a great gaming laptop. Oh, whereas nice. yeah, whereas this one, you know, it's got an Intel, but the ORX my right. it's got I believe and I got to go check because I don't remember, but it does have an Nvidia card in it. So. <laughs> yeah, you've got a couple of ones that have the Nvidia. It does. It, yep. it does. Nvidia GeForce GTX 10 series. Yes. I was right. Woohoo. I am good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not just a video card, though. I mean, let's be clear here. It's a GeForce GTX 1060 or 1070, right? Yeah, exactly. You're not going to be hitting much lag with those inside a laptop, you know? Just, nice. It's just enough to run some gaming. 
Yeah, just just no. just a little, just a little, just a little power. Like some pong on it and crisis. I mean, crazy. Stuff. Well, let me ask you, Ryan. What is it? What is it that you got to have in a laptop? There are a couple of things that I must have in a laptop. Number one, large trackpad. I cannot stand these tiny little trackpads where you're, you know, trying to fit your fingers on it and because it's unusable and your fingers get cramped and your arm hurts. Backlit keyboard, because I use my laptops. A lot of times I have laptops sitting by the nightstand, et cetera. Backlit keyboard to me or in a dark room because you don't want to wake up the kids or whatever. The backlit keyboard's a must have. These are things that I will not buy a laptop if they don't have them. Aluminum body is very important to me. And that's why a lot of times you mentioned the MacBook. I use a MacBook and put Linux on it because right. I like that aluminum body. Uh, lots of ports, which now you don't buy a new MacBook and expect that because they had none. You'd be dongling everywhere. So gotta have lots <laughs> of ports so I can put all of my extra stuff on it. And then an HD screen. Those are the things that, you know, I can deal when I'm in a laptop life while it's fun to game on a laptop. I spend so much money on my desktops. So I don't look for the super, super power. But those are the things that I have to to have. Based on that, if you could pick which laptop do you think fits those needs the most of just on those out of your lineup at System76? So, you know, with the aluminum body, of course, that's the Galago Pro right there. The trackpad is not that bad on this one. It's it maybe a little small. I don't I don't know what you mean by large, but it, this, it, big. No, <laughs> this big. <laughs> Otherwise, the Oryx Pro is, is another one. It's got a much larger trackpad and you'll be able to uh, use all of it. It also has an uh, aluminum space on it. Yeah. Nice. So. Well, you know, Clifford in our patron group mentioned, and I'll need this too before I order one. He says, what you guys need to produce are talking points to feed to people who are trying to justify to their spouses spending money on another laptop. <laughs> and I think that's a great suggestion at the 76 Why should you pick this? Right. Honey, it looks really good. In, in, in part of the... <laughs> Yes, but they know. need to be really good so they convince the spouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's got to sound good. It can't good. be our real feelings. It has to be like something like, imagine all the financial planning I could do for us, honey. Right? If I just had this laptop with a 1060 in it. <laughs> or something I can watch videos while I'm cooking. I'm there for you. you there you go. Or I can watch <laughs> cooking videos. <laughs> to learn how to cook. <laughs> All right. So you guys don't offer just laptops. You offer all kinds of machines from desktops and servers. So let's talk about the desktops for a little bit. Okay. So the Meerkat. Oh, gosh. I want this thing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it looks freaking awesome, man. You got this little tiny box that I could put right there on my tower and have like a second machine hooked I love up it right next. Where it's going to go. I, I'm sorry, right there, dude. It's going right there. <laughs> <laughs> the Meerkat's so cool, man. So you have a tall version and a short version. With the taller version, you can pack up to four terabytes of storage into this thing. I mean, can you imagine That's this? Right. <laughs> this is unbelievable. What do you think, Ryan? Dude, it's like having a whole Synology NAS within a computer, right? I mean, that's a lot of space there. But the whole thing that's intriguing here is four-inch computer square yep so you right. could literally stick this down in your you know in your living room and have it playing on your tv so it could be a media center you right. could mm -hmm. stick it anywhere that you could hide from your spouse so they don't even know you bought a new computer unless your friend tells your spouse hey well that would be rude rocco <laughs> <laughs> why would you want to get me in trouble i wouldn't i would do that to you <laughs> uh so has this been a successful entry to your guys's lineup yeah, you know, I mean, it just fits that that area exactly as you said, where you know nobody, maybe nobody wants that traditional huge desktop, you know, that's sitting there with the lights under your desk, making with a lot of big fan. But it sort of fits that area where uh, you want to hide, but but it still has all the power and uh, space that you need, right? So mm -hmm. I think it's been a very successful, successful product for us. Like I said, it, it's a bridge, right? It's bridge between that laptop or uh, the desktop where you, if you don't want the whole thing, you have, we have, we have something for that Solution. particular kind of, yeah. Well, I think it's perfect as we get, you know, go along with technology, you have people trying to go smaller with everything. Uh, I mean, except for TV screens, of course, but uh, <laughs> most of the time you, 
you know, in houses and modern houses, you have everything clean look, you have everything like mm -hmm. sleek and, and you don't want a big tower sitting around anywhere. So I think it's perfect yeah. for that where you yeah. just, I mean, mount it to the back of the monitor for crying out loud. <laughs> I, mean, like, <laughs> I, I just, I just built one just now, um, actually a, a day or so ago, I took a meerkat uh, and built a server out of it so that I can. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Um, I, I'm playing with the idea of putting a Mastodon server so that we could be very nice on Mastodon. So, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> you know what's funny, Rocco, is I wanted to build, I told my wife, I'm like, I'm going to build us a, a media center computer. So I built this whole mini ITX system. Mm -hmm. But our, it, <laughs> you would die in my house because you're such a theming nut. But it would hang off the side of the entertainment system. Are you center. kidding, dude? Just, even in the mini ITX, it was too big. And this is all I needed the whole time. This is all you needed. Is just to stick next to the computer instead of building my own thing here. Now you know. Now I know. <laughs> all right. So you offer a ton of laptops and a ton of desktops. Um, everything is based off of Intel. AMD has had a lot of recent success lately. And so do you see yourselves offering AMD at any time in the future? We don't have any current plans. Uh, we are excited about what's going on in the AMD space, but uh, we're, we're kind of focused on the manufacturing. And so, you know, adding another CPU family might complicate things, but we are, we are appraising the situation, so to speak, because we have had many questions from the community about whether we're going to support Ryzen or any of the other AMD type things, uh, AMD CPUs. Uh, but I, I guess right now I would say uh, we're we're focused on other watch. things. <laughs> we're we're excited, but we're we're, we're in a kind of holding pattern, waiting uh, because we have other priorities, so to speak. All right. So your website is amazing. Um, one of my favorite sections about it is the about us. I like to I like to see the people behind a company when I'm making a purchase. Right. And I love that System76 kind of puts that front and center. But not just that. When you move your cursor, everybody turns around and kind of makes a good face when you move your cursor over the pictures. Very, very well done. And then <laughs> Rocco and I were going through the website, and we also noticed you guys had a job posting. And at the bottom, it said, bartending is a plus. <laughs> this, this makes me think, what a cool place to work. What is the work environment like at System76? <laughs> We are all have our own set of quirkiness. We are a very quirky company. <laughs> like Rocco uh, and I? Yeah, Pretty much. It's exactly like you guys. <laughs> like if you if you look at our tweets, uh, and I'm the one doing them, a lot of our we, I, I try to project our quirkiness as much as possible I on social it. media. We we have funny stuff like uh, when the the new Star Wars showed up. You know, we we put uh, uh, posters on our our one conference room with Star Wars spoilers <laughs> and like because nobody was uh, we had a we had a debate over uh, uh, fish like can we should we cook fish or not <laughs> uh, and and I actually posted that on social media and I got a great amount of responses so the, the, there was a picture on, on our on our uh, microwave that had the right kind of fish, which was a Swedish fish, <laughs> and the wrong kind of fish was which, which was everything else. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so we we all have uh, our our interesting bits uh, about us, and we're, it's it's wonderfully strange at times. Wonderfully, there's always people laughing. There's always some argument about some kind of movie trivia basically Look, you can't trivia. put two geeks in a room and not have them <laughs> arguing about exactly stuff. exactly so there's always something going around <laughs> nice so all right so let's talk about pop os for a little bit so yeah. there are all kinds of distributions out there obviously ubuntu is the the most popular one out there what did you feel was missing from the offerings that are currently out there to make you decide to develop your own? So two things. Uh, one, uh, I think it was a feeling that uh, the options out there were, were moving towards general computing and moving away from ge general purpose computing 
is what we wanted to do. We wanted to focus on the kind of things our customers do, which is moving towards STEM or science or things that scientists do, the kind of computing power. So we wanted to build an OS that is uh, sort of catered towards that market. So, you know, we did, we've been doing this for 12 now in our 13th year. And so we want to be able to create the kind of user experience that makers and scientists could could take advantage of, right? Because we have a lot of experience in this space. So that's one of the things where Pop! OS comes from is, is being able to to do that. So that's that's one aspect of why we're doing Pop! OS. And, you know, the, the thing was that we were waiting for Unity and when Canonical decided to stop working on Unity, it was, it was, our, it was an opportunity to do precisely that, right? So we were able to uh, build an experience that we want uh, for our customers. Nice. Very so nice. So the wall, the wallpaper for pop OS it, an icon theme is beautiful. And I know you're like, oh, there's more to it than that, but the Rocco, this is something very important to Rocco. <laughs> a lot of times you go into distros and the first thing you see in their wallpaper and you're like, Oh gosh, what are they going to do with? <laughs> but you guys don't have that problem. You guys have a beautiful theme in wallpaper. So the second you install it, it looks great. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Who designed this? And it's it's because Kate, our our our, our designer and art director, um, likes robots. So she and the CEO Caro both love robots, and and so I like them already. It, it, it's right? the idea about the future, <laughs> and, and so that's one of the things. The robot actually has a name. His name is Quinton. I love it. <laughs> so Quinton. So, so you know, it's a kind of a personal commentary on, on the uh, on. The future, so to speak. So that's that's why we have Quinton. <laughs> on Quinton our, on our... <laughs> Very nice. I love it. <laughs> really, we have it because Kate loves robots. <laughs> it's good. We like Kate. Okay. <laughs> Kate, you are awesome. By the way, <laughs> right? She when 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 we uh, when we got the kind of questions, she she was very happy to see that uh <laughs> you guys love the the work so she was, that's awesome um, to hear. so she's definitely very uh pumped about that all of you liked her liked her work so <laughs> well it's beautiful work and the fact that it passed Rocco's test is a testament <laughs> to just how beautiful it is look i right. i just i did a, a install of it the other day i was in it last night and it's just, it's one beautiful operating system from the theming all <laughs> down it's just one, it's one now obviously gnome itself can be a beautiful operating system, mm -hmm. but the touches, Absolutely. the touches that you guys have put on it have been amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So is there any differences between pop OS that I download from an ISO compared to what you pre-install on the systems that you send out? So, yes. Um, I think the one, the main difference is we include the system 76 drivers when you could get a machine from us versus uh, getting it from the ISO. So, mm. you know, that is our collection of drivers and tweaks and everything that's specific for a system 76 machine versus the, the, what you get from the ISO, which is more of a generic version. So, you know, you you can install the system seventy six driver if you wanted to afterwards, and then you could you would be on par with what you get from system seventy six. So it's it's not some secret sauce that nobody else can have. It's just it's right. just uh, you're able to. But everything on the face of every all the software, everything else is the same. Yes, okay. everything else is the same. It's an open source project. Everything is all all of our work is on GitHub and you know easily available and be able to look at. And, so. And I noticed that you have on your ISOs, you have a NVIDIA version and you have an AMD version to download, which is different. Now, you don't usually see that. Right, right. Because because we support NVIDIA on our machines, we have a specific install for NVIDIA with the NVIDIA driver and everything that we can test specifically QA for with NVIDIA. So that's why there's two of them. I don't know why every distro doesn't do this. This is such a good idea that you guys implemented here uh, to be able to go and download the distro and have the driver auto install. Now, certain distros have done similar type of things where they've tried 
uh, to pull that off. But it's really a simple solution you guys have done here. Download this right. one for NVIDIA, download this one for AMD. Boom, you're done. Right. And, and you know, you don't have to mess around with getting a machine and then getting the NVIDIA drivers uh, or things like that. You know, you know, you have an NVIDIA card. Right. And you're going to get this ISO and it's it, that experience is going to be really smooth because mm -hmm. uh, it's what you would expect. It's so. a very simple solution to a complex problem. The other ones I mentioned will sometimes try to do an auto detection and install the driver from there. But yeah. sometimes that doesn't work. But your solution is going to work every time. It's, it's going to work every time. Gonna be there. <laughs> so it's a, it's a pretty simple solution to a complex problem, which I think is cool. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about Ryan's favorite thing in the operating system. Pop yeah, shop. Man. Yeah. Tell us about it, Ryan. <laughs> Well, listen, I've given a lot of flack to distributions and rightfully so uh, because Are you sure? of, yes, okay, because of their software stores. Um, most of the software stores you go to out there, they're either, you know, the search algorithms are terrible. The graphics, if that's not terrible, then it's the graphics in them that are terrible. If that's not terrible, then they just don't work and crash. You know, there's all kinds of problems out there with shops, but op shop. Uh, in, in utilizing it and downloading it, look, first of all, it's beautiful. Uh, so again, the theming and things on there is extraordinarily well done. Uh, well, I guess my question is, is this just a standard Ubuntu store overlay that you guys have? And it's just the theming? Because you made it look a lot better. That, let's say that. It's actually Elementary's App Store. Uh, we're using elementary. That's Zappy. why I should have known. <laughs> known. In fact, in fact, elementary uh, Daniel Foray from Elementary's be will be here next week for some planning work on Pop Shop and and actually uh, we're doing what you'll see with Pop Shop and the initial uh, user setup and install. So we're we're kind of doing a sort of themed uh, storyboard from when you install your computer, when you uh, log in for the first time, and linking that with how you get your application. So we're, we're kind of creating a, a, a whole story from that. It's like a journey, right? I so, love that. Complete so, so that kind of conceptual yeah, design is what, again, Kate, Kate's working on as well. So it's one of the things we're doing to kind of differentiate ourselves. You know, yep. it's not Pop OS, it's not just a, a rebranded GNOME and Ubuntu. It's it's a it's a much it's a lot it's much more than that. So these are some of the things where we're doing with that. We're, we're also have other things like high DPI that I haven't talked about yet. So <laughs> Well, I love the Pop Shop name. I love the way it's set up. And and now that you've mentioned that it's the elementary app store, no wonder <laughs> because it is beautiful. Right. It's super right. fast. Um, so all in all, it's it's pretty awesome. So let's talk yeah. about high DPI for a little bit. What what sure. are you doing specifically for high DPI? High high DPI is this something we've become very passionate about. If you ever had a high DPI laptop and then you connected a, a low DPI monitor, the experience is absolutely horrible. It, David, one of our engineers, have been. this is something he's very passionate about. And so he came up with this high DPI daemon that you know when you plug in a low DPI monitor, it will, it will set your screens out correctly. So you're not gonna be futzing around trying to make everything look good because that, that experience will be done for you automatically. And so it's part of the System76 driver, but we are working towards making it part of the Pop! OS general, for use in general by in Pop! OS. So that's the thing. I think it's going to be one of our cornerstone features, you know, that we have so far uh, uh, on Pop! OS. So. Nice. That's awesome. So I, I've got uh, Rocco on the show. He's a huge fan of GNOME. I don't know if you noticed, but in the background, you can see him with the gnome <laughs> back there. You know, the, the gnome. gnome. Gnome as we call it, so we don't get <laughs> by anybody. Yep. Uh, he's a huge fan of the desktop environment. So I yeah. just want to let you know that uh, I don't have a question here. It's just a revised mm -hmm. prediction that Rocco will run Pop! OS in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> and we would love that. He should come to our chat. Rocco, you should come to our chat channel and hang out with us. I just might do that. <laughs> but hey, look, I like I said, right now I'm running Ubuntu Mate and it's running great. Yeah. But I booted to Pop! OS and 
you know, you look, I ran gnome for the longest time and I'm like, man, I really, it's calling like, my, no, name. I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> Come back and, to us, Rocco. and again, you guys have done such a great job with the theming that it's like, wow, this is so beautiful. You guys have installed a few extensions to make it uh, better for the user, I guess. Uh, one of them being like the suspend button. Uh, the alt tab raises the, the first windows, always shows workspaces, and the pop shop details. So are you planning on putting any more extensions in to uh, customize the, the experience for the user, or are you pretty much done? That's pretty the extent of it. We're just sort of beginning this journey on Pop! OS. So uh, I, I wouldn't say we're not going to add anything more at this point. I think I think this all comes from the the feedback we get from customers, uh, feedback we get from the community on what what is required to make a, a really good experience in Pop! OS. So nothing is off the table when it comes to adding features to pop os whether that may be more extensions everything or or anything else for that matter so right yeah. so you know i was looking at uh, the uh your website again kind of going back to that and there was a job posting in there but there was and we talked about that a second ago with the bartending which is awesome but there was something else there and i gotta listen i want you to be honest with us okay <laughs> We were looking at your job posting and it says that uh, there's an opening in Denver manufacturing facility complete with lasers, robots, cranes, and ovens. What are you guys up to out there? <laughs> and how can I get a chance to play with the lasers? <laughs> so we are building our own manufacturing facility. So, you know, we, we get a lot of flack from people about being a Clevo reseller and yep. or whatever it is. And what we're doing now is we're going to build our own laptops. We're going to build our own desktops for, you know, so we're starting off with a desktop. So, and we're, we're designing, uh, we've made some designs with proof of concepts and um, I hope you guys are letting Kate in there to help with that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Kate's, in, Kate's involved in everything. <laughs> awesome. But but yeah, so this is an exciting new journey for us because when Ubuntu came along um, for, for the GNOME desktop, the first time a distro says, we're going to pick one, one desktop and we're going to integrate deeply into it. Uh, we're, it's going to be a singular experience. What System76 wants to do is we're going to do one more. Right, we're going to integrate with hardware. Uh, and, and not just, so you're going to have standard hardware parts. You're going to get that's q against Linux. It's all going to work. And then you're going to have a beautiful design. So the machine looks beautiful and is unique and is part of the whole expression, right? Like you got this beautiful laptop and you have an OS that goes with it. Right. Uh, right. that's themed in the same way. So everything is vertically integrated in, in every way. So it's really an exciting kind of concept for us that we're really eager. We're having a lot of fun with it. So. Do they let you in the room with the robots and the lasers? They never do. <laughs> I, nobody cares about the marketing guy. <laughs> well, but, uh, so but this the lasers may... are powerful enough to cut metal. So <laughs> you... that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, this is something you guys are working on. Is there plans to do desktops as well, like that, or is it just laptops at first? No, it's desktops first. Laptops are much harder to engineer uh, because it's much smaller form factor. There's a lot of material science slash uh, mechanical engineering and uh, everything that goes into a, a, a laptop. So it's a much harder problem to solve. So we're going to start with a desktop, which, and then as we get, as we understand how the engineering process works and how to mass produce it, things like that, then we can pivot and start working on it with that laptop. Before the desktops, how far along is it? Do you have plans on who you're going to be using for parts as far as like cases and whatnot? Or I think we're still really early. What, what we have now is a space. Right. <laughs> we have a building. Space, robot, hey, and laser. That's a start. <laughs> so the, the rest is uh, uh, we have a, a, an acrylic proof of concept. And, uh, and so that's where we are right now. And, and we're going to build out the dream. Right. And then build out the dream. Exactly. If it's well, well said. <laughs> All right. So system 76 has been 
loyal to Linux for a long time. Yep. What changes are you excited to see in Linux? What changes do you want to see in Linux? You know, Linux is, has been going on a very interesting journey, right? Um, they've been involved in containers. Uh, you know, they've pretty much taken over the IT space. They've taken over the, uh, the computer room. Uh, one thing they haven't done yet is the desktop space, right? That is the one, you know, there's always these talk about you're at a desktop and all these other things. And, yep. uh, which, you know, we, it's a big perennial joke, but we talk about geeks having their side projects. Uh, my side project is building a, uh, application ecosystem. So, nice. uh, some of those things is about working with the kernel team, uh, the kernel people about how to, how can we better have a better desktop experience? Uh, what changes can we make in the kernel? Can we do that? On top of that, there's, you know, you, you see both Canonical and uh, Gnome working on ubiquitous applications. So you have Snaps and you have Flatpak. And uh, do you, I think people don't understand what's exciting about those things. So it's, it's exciting and also uh, a great, point of geek <laughs> arguments so to speak <laughs> right so what what is what is what is exciting about ubiquitous applications right it's the idea that we a somebody can create an application and be able to distribute it on any distro so the concept is when an application developer wants to write an application on linux the first thing he goes like well which one, right? So you, have, you have your Ubuntu's, you have your Fedora's, you have Arch. all of these, and, or Arch, yes, all of those things. So how do uh, you know? It feels like it's a dissected landscape, right? Of, mm -hmm. of, of things. So being able to the other the other thing that happens is distros, uh, what what they deliver to you is not exactly the same of what the application developer has done. Right. Uh, a, a distro will make modifications. They will uh, maybe fix a bug or not. And so a application to say, hey, uh, a person will say my app doesn't work. And it's not the same app because things have been changed. So there's all these interesting problems that's happened. So if you're moving from a distro centric world that you are today and then moving to a, a hybrid distro slash developer centric because distros still have an important function that you know we, we're not we don't want them completely out, but by doing this, uh, we were able to simplify how we we create applications. And you know, already you've seen the app stores that uh, you know the elementary app store, right. you know, all of those things. So now you're going to get yours from a single or multiple points, but then you're also able to know how many people downloaded this app, how many people liked it. And right. now you're able to measure because that's one thing that's always been missing is you can't measure this market. No, and there's no system. Now, I, thought, I thought distro watch did all that. <laughs> <laughs> you but, mean that static page? No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but, but that's, that's, that's the exciting project for me. It, the exciting things I see is those changes. They don't, it's it's going to sneak up on you because right. it's coming there. But that's what excites me, and what really gets me going is this idea of of building a market so that we can continue to make free software and open source an important part in people's lives Absolutely. every day, right? as opposed to proprietary. Yep. So, well, one thing I think that is awesome about you guys is the collaboration in the community itself. Now, there's no question that you guys took a lot of flack for creating your own distro. I mean, I, I watched all these people comments come in and I'm like, but there was a lot of flack that came in. But you guys have continued on and the collaboration between you and elementary and just in the Linux community in general is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's really important to have great relationships with your upstream or, or your downstream, you know, uh, we have great relationships with uh, the good um, people, the the um, the elementary guys, you know, Ubuntu. So I, I think it's a it's 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 what makes Pop OS uh, so successful is being on the shoulders of giants. Yep. So. 
So you guys yeah. have servers, desktops, laptops, your own OS, robots, lasers. <laughs> What's next? This is 76. I am just as eager to know as the rest of you where we go. Manufacturing. <laughs> yeah, pretty but much. Manufacturing is where we are, and that's going to yep. be the, the true the road next big there. step. Yeah. Also, as you know, Pop! OS is also going to be evolving, right? Right now, the Delta is very small between the difference of upstream GNOME, but I think over time, we're going we're gonna to start shaping our own destiny around what, what a desktop for makers and STEM and scientists is going to look like. So those, that's another. So there's lots of multi-pronged things going on together. So yeah, I think we're going to be a company to watch simply by seeing how we're going to solve these problems and how, going forward. So it's it's going to be an interesting time. Exciting future. Yep. Yeah. Well, there was a lot, like I said, there was a lot of flack that came from Pop! OS, but it's not just a respin or or a theming that you guys have done. You guys have done lower level stuff in the operating system, added all kinds of different elements to it. So I think it's great. You know, people kind of say, well, you know, you're just repackaging it. It's like, it's not that at all. There, there's an incredible amount of work that the engineering team does day in, day out. You know, things like the firmware changes, the, the work we've done with the firmware, um, the, the high DPI work. These are all things that are low level. You know, building a user experience is very difficult thing to do. And anybody who's a designer understands what a complex task that is to build a, a relationship between the user and the person uh, and the computer. So, yep. At least to build a good one. Anybody can build one. <laughs> may not be a good one. Well, it may not work. Right. Well, the last thing I'm going to say about Pop! OS is I just want to personally say thank you to Kate for all of the <laughs> pixel work because it looks beautiful. <laughs> and I care about that stuff. So that's one heck of a compliment from Rocco. <laughs> he, he finds one pixel wrong, he will distro hop. So <laughs> I have done that before. Yeah. Of <laughs> so you sell beautiful hardware. We covered that. You guys are a staple in the Linux community. Even early on, when I started learning about Linux, I, people were telling me about System76. Everyone knows the name. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was my uh, pleasure. We really enjoyed learning about System76, learning some of the history. You guys have tons of things going on. Plus, you got robots and lasers. Let's not forget. That's right. You right. ship to 63 countries. You offer financing. You get bragging rights if you get a System76 machine, of course. So you got and that one stop you shopping. support the community. And you support yeah. the community. So thank you again for taking the time to talk to us. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Thank Absolutely. you, Sri. Anytime. Thank you for listening to another episode of Destination Linux Podcast. Yeah, so a good, good time to upgrade. I like it. Another uh, the wife Rocco said. <laughs> Rocco said I have to upgrade. Rocco said I have to upgrade. I'm you all to have to upgrade. Life. I'm trying yeah. that tonight. Tell her, tell her. Tell her. I said Ryan has to upgrade. <laughs> Finally, I'm getting that thread ripper. Can I use that excuse too? You can, Clifford. It's not copyrighted. You can use it. This is open source world here. Open source. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget all emails to Rocco at destination <laughs> All the wives will be writing Rocco. <laughs> Yeah. But you've got to win the lottery first. Hey, if we win the lottery, we can actually pay our producer, Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to say something wrong? You better get information and let me play with those lasers. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to check out those lasers too. They haven't yeah. invited me to go over there. Well, that's you got to tell them. You're like they were. They were big in the best stuff in the podcast, I, guys. I got to get in there and figure this out. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, um, it's there on sale if you're interested. It's very cool. Just saying. You're gonna buy me a subscription? Hold on, let me think. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should have thought on that longer. I should have. <laughs> Hold on, let me think again. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't need this. I don't need this. You know what we're going to do? 
We're going to tell the guests we're not getting along today, and we're going to interview them separately. You do your Are interview, we, we going to take a mine. time out? We're taking... <laughs> You just combine. <laughs> <laughs> I like the side profile better. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Love I'd it. love that part of it, but I don't know <laughs> if I would like the. Like, okay, I'm very, per I'm very particular in the way I no. like things. No. I know that's hard to believe sometimes, but I'm very particular in the way I like things. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's <laughs> great! I love hearing that. Yeah, what you said. <laughs> Nobody asked you. I've seen you in there, like, you know, in the document. I'm like, Rocco, Rocco. And you don't respond, so I assume you must leave it up too, right, Rocco? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sure. ignoring you. <laughs> hey, hey, Rocco, you there? Hey, hey, Rocco. <clears throat> My voice is, like, almost gone. Nobody will notice. Hopefully not. Since I carry the show. I know. What would we do without you? <laughs> no, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Mock Zeb, maybe? I can't see the paperwork. I can't see the wallpaper because I've got all the screens up. So. <laughs> you should use A3. And I've gone back. I've gone back to um, what did you one say, monitor. Right? Nothing. Are you are you mocking now? <laughs> you're so upset about me being an i3 user. You're mocking. Uh, <laughs> I am mocking. <laughs> you're over there like oh, I use i3. That's not even my voice. I don't sound like that. Right, Rocco. <laughs> you're right. He's pleading the fifth. That's it. I got nothing. No. I got nothing. Why do I put up with this? Well, I, I think I've come to that stage now where I'm going to stop distro hopping. We all say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say that like once a week as I'm downloading an ISO. Yep. I don't know what's so hard about stopping distro hopping. I've done it hundreds of times. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Quote of the year. <laughs> mm -hmm.